With Rishi Sunak, we're now on our fifth Oxford Tory Prime Minister in a row. Oxford and Cambridge used to produce Prime Ministers, but really since the war, it's been almost entirely Oxford. So from Churchill through Liz Truss, 12 of the last 16 Prime Ministers were at Oxford. That means there's a very good chance there's a future Prime Minister on campus now. The impact of Oxford on the last decade of British politics is massive. Modern colleges George Osborne presided over austerity. Dominic Cummings? Extra college. Boris Johnson? Balliol. When Ed Miliband and David Cameron faced each other at PMQs, they weren't just from the same university, they studied the same thing. There are around 25,000 students at Oxford, many of whom will go on to become household names. Maybe one of them will be Prime Minister. I can assure you that I will never be Prime Minister. Have you met anyone at Oxford that you think this person should be Prime Minister? No. <laughs> God, no. And if we go off of who, like, we think a Prime Minister should be, it actually really worries me. Uh, not yet. But then I've also mainly met people when we're relatively pissed, and I feel like then there's not a good judge of, I mean, actually, that's probably poignant, isn't it? <laughs> but, uh... I think on one level it makes sense because obviously we have the privilege of, of access to a very high level of education, but clearly the most recent Prime Ministers have not been doing such a great job, so... We're... But equally in Oxford it's not just the education, it's mostly like networking. So for example there's the Oxford Union where so many people go there and you get to meet so many influential people that it may, like it is also kind of knowing people. You might look at Boris Johnson or Jacob Rees-Mogg and see how at home they feel in Parliament, how relaxed they are, like they were born to it. This place might have something to do with it, the Oxford Union. Yeah so a number of British Prime Ministers have been through the Oxford Union, often ending up as president, like Johnson or Ted Heath or William Gladstone, or getting elected as some other kind of officer like Theresa May or Harold Macmillan. So the grip of the Oxford Union on British politics is extraordinary. You know, this dinky little student debating society. Basically set up as a private members club. How much is an Oxford membership, union membership? 300. 300 pounds? Lifetime, lifetime though. So it's all good. <laughs> what they do is host debates and debates are about speaking funny and uh, using old-fashioned rhetoric. So you can imagine Boris Johnson was a star. So what you come out of the Oxford Union knowing is how to get elected and how to speak and not how to run anything. So Oxford now, I think, attracts ambitious 17, 18-year-old politicos who feel, well, that's where I'll meet the other politicos like me and that's where I'll enter the student game and build the networks that when I go to Westminster and I, you know, try and get into the House of Commons, I'll know half the people there already, which is the, the position that people like Boris Johnson and Michael Gove and Rees Mogg had, you know, they walked in and they didn't think, oh, what's this? They thought, no, this is exactly like the Oxford Union. When I went to my first like debate, I felt very out of place, especially because I wasn't formally dressed. I was just wearing like this coat from Primark. <laughs> and everyone else was like in black tie, so I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. <laughs> um, and if you actually go into the union, you can actually see their pictures of them when they were students. I thought that was quite weird because it was like, this is probably the closest I'm ever going to get to the prime minister. <laughs> um, and I think for me, coming from like a background where, coming from a background that's quite deprived, I think coming to Oxford and seeing that, it's like, for me, that's very abnormal. But I understand that for other people who come from more privileged backgrounds, it's kind of like, nothing to them. For centuries, Oxford University has been a training ground for the white upper classes. As recently as 2017, Oxford admitted more pupils from Westminster School than it did black people. There has been some effort to change this. The university says that it has doubled the amount of people from disadvantaged backgrounds starting at the university, and there are other measures being introduced. But at Oxford, with its ancient traditions that are familiar if you went to Eton or Harrow and alien to the rest of us, is that enough? As a whole, I think it's, they do try their best um, to reach out with people, but I don't think there's anything that can feasibly be done at a university like this to kind of reach out to people who would never in a million years even consider thinking about applying here. Um, it just feels like the, the intellect and everything here is just like completely next level and no one else can attain it so there's no point to kind of try if that makes sense and is that damaging yeah very much yeah um when i was applying uh everyone told me to not bother because they'll never take anyone like me in like not not even 
me myself, not even like based on like my grades or anything, my experiences, the type of person I am, I would not fit in and there's no point to try to fit in or even be here. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's well, okay. You, you proved, you proved I mean, I'm here now, yeah. so it's okay. <laughs> like, when I walk in the kitchen with like my weekly shop of like milk and bread, it feels like I'm judged in a, a weird way. Um, you know, some people can't afford to like fill their fridges. I've got a few friends who actually dropped out because they can't afford to like fulfill the life at Oxford. You shouldn't have to have attended an elite school or be manor born for the privilege of an Oxford education. But that's the issue. Attending Oxford is in of itself a privilege. Attending Oxford means you're entering into a centuries old ecosystem to funnel you into a position of power. An Oxford degree has become a shorthand that tells everyone else that you're a clever bugger who should be listened to, rather than just signifying that you got decent A-levels and you like studying medieval languages. I think that there's a lot of shame in the establishment that Boris Johnson kind of epitomizes the worst of the British establishment, the kind of treating everything as a game, the rhetoric over substance, the entitlement, the, the sense of uh, I should rule because I'm born to rule, and um, the laziness, the not reading the dossier, the going on holiday. And so I think that Britain is one, there's a popular demand for a reset moment. So as it were, get rid of the tough cast and to have more serious people in power. And there's an end of tolerance for entitlement because the Etonians haven't really left us in a very good place. And so I see the British institutions on the defensive. So Oxford and Cambridge have massively reformed in the last few years. They now take in two thirds of their new undergraduates come from state schools, often from deprived state schools. You see institutions like the Foreign Office recruiting university blind. So when you apply, they don't know which university you were at. So uh, to, to kind of take away their bias for Ox Oxbridge. And so I think Britain, uh, there's a much more egalitarian anti-entitlement mood around that is going to slowly, over the very long term, create a different elite in a different country. Oxford graduates have led the charge on projects that have changed Britain. Thatcherism, the invasion of Iraq, austerity, Brexit. And now we have another Oxford graduate number 10, hoping we'll trust him because he seems clever, rather than any actual evidence. Maybe we should give someone else a chance. <laughs>